Well, welcome. I know that we're meeting for the first time, so maybe we'll, we'll uh, before we start sort of the official questions and connection, I thought I'd just kind of introduce myself. Uh, uh, and then maybe if we it, uh, it, want to do like a round table of introductions, that would be great too. Uh, sure. Maybe we're for, from where you're joining too. Uh, I wonder if, if you all are in Richmond or some other places, but my name is Francis Thompson and I live here in Richmond, Virginia. I manage a corporate art collection um, in the Richmond area. So I'm really happy to have been part of this project uh, for the exhibition and having you here today. So th welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you for having us. And maybe if you want to do, we want to do a quick round table, it would be yeah. great to, to introduce yourselves and learn more about uh, where, where you're from, where you're working from and your background. Yeah, sure. I can go first. Um, my name is Dustin Klein. I'm a lighting designer and video projection designer. Uh, I've worked concerts typically in the past, um, but we worked uh, doing projections on the Lee Monument all summer as part of the Black Lives Matter protests. And um, yeah, happy to be doing more art uh, outside of concerts. Yeah, I'm Alex Kriki. Um, I'm from Richmond, Virginia as well. Uh, mostly work in nonprofit communications uh, for the last get almost a year now, Dustin and I have been doing our Reclaiming the Monument project, uh, projecting uh, monuments around Richmond and doing uh, light-based art installations like the one we're about to discuss. Uh, my name is Miguel. Uh, my name is Miguel Carter Fisher. Um, I'm a painter and a professor, um, art professor at Virginia State University, and um, I've had the good fortune of knowing Dustin and Alex since high school, so we all go way back. Way back. And um, you know, uh, for this project, I was just really, um, you know awesome that they asked me to uh, be a part of it and you know I have a great deal of admiration for the the work they've been doing um at Marcus David Peter Circle. That's great. Thanks Miguel. Wonderful I appreciate that. So we'll go ahead and get started. So I'll ask a few questions yeah. but it's really the conversation you're in, in control of it. So if you have anything that you want to talk about on the piece in particular feel free about that. Um, since we're in a group setting here I didn't want uh, uh, sort of my questions to d drive us too much. So uh, and so you all might have be coming to the table here with some comments and I wanna make sure that you um, feel included for that. Um, so I hope you, you're okay with that approach. Yeah, um, that's so great. We will try to keep it within 10 minutes, a little bit over is okay. So once we start up, I'll be watching the clock. And then it, it, if you notice me just kind of hit the stop record, that's the reason why. So I'm trying to like do my best I get kind of chatty and like to learn more and more. So I may um, stop the recording at some point, but I'm always happy to continue on any more of the conversation. Okay, sounds awesome. great. We'll go ahead and get um, started here. So thank you, Dustin, Alex, and Miguel for joining. And uh, I really appreciate you submitting your work into the Black Lives Matter RVA exhibition this year. Your work was selected for the for the Injustice in America gallery, a really strong piece. You've gotten a lot of re national recognition, a lot of visibility on the piece itself. Can you talk a little bit about the work um, itself and, and what you did on the site? Yeah, this is a essentially a digital collage. It's a collaboration between Dustin Miguel and myself, as well as uh, Josh Sarambo, who is a uh, painter and uh, visionary artist and uh, photographer, Zach Victor. We sort of all created elements, um, took you know these multiple media approaches. We've got 3D sculptural effects in there. We've got digital painting, we've got Miguel's oil painting and we've got photography and we sort of collaged it all together in Photoshop to sort of reflect um, Dustin and I's experience out of Marcus David Peters circle where we spent uh, the better part of the last summer projecting on the Robert E. Lee Monument as part of the Black Lives Matter movement here in Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, and I think like our, our big goal of the piece was to try to like kind of recreate um, the pedestal of the statue and just kind of recreate our experience in a, a visual. Um, you know, we had 
we kind of used a lot of the same projections that we have been projecting on the base of the statue as part of the animation. Like this whole piece was animated. Um, it was printed about 11 and a half feet tall and then used as an installation in the Inlight Festival, uh, 1708 Galleries Inlight Festival last year. Um, and yeah, we were really just trying to like honor the space and honor the transformation that um, the space kind of changed from the Lee Monument to Marcus David Peter Circle from the protest and just um, really just manifested and changed. So we just kind of wanted to capture that transformation in, in a solid piece. Yeah, we uh, worked with uh, Marcus David Peter's sister, Princess Blanding, to hone in uh, the portrait and how she would feel appropriate to uh, represent her brother. And Miguel did such a wonderful job creating this really profoundly emotionally moving portrait of Marcus David Peters. I think really brought the whole piece together and made it work. Yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Miguel. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> so talk a little bit about the imagery that we see for the particular Im you know, um, image here, the painting. Is, are there different elements involved? Like, was it photography? Is it painting? How did that all come together to create this particular image, knowing that the project is uh, large and there's a lot of different facets to it? Talk a little bit about the image itself. Um, you know, so basically we've got a photograph of the Lee Monument that we manipulated. Our friend Zach Victor took that picture. And then Dustin and I sort of designed the piece around finding symbols to represent uh, our experiences over the summer as well as, you know, images to represent Marcus himself. You know, a lot of the floral in plant imagery is actually from plants that were out at the gardens at Marcus David Peter's Circle. So we went out there and photographed those. And, uh, you know, we've got the basketball hoop that was out there and there. We've got the bullhorn and Marcus played piano. So we had uh, Josh Zarambo uh, do this piano design. He also taught biology, so he incorporated some books in there to try and represent his... Uh, background and life as an educator. And then we have the sort of on either side of Marcus, we have the no justice, no peace symbol sort of of the uh, lady justice clouded in tear gas and the cop car on fire kind of represent like this dual elements of creation and destruction, beauty and horror that were out there at times. So in a sense, you, you've created a piece that captures what that space is but for me i really felt like you're capturing the history of what you've observed there too even though you were in that space and part of the community and being part of that conversation of racial injustice this to me captured what was happening at that very location as well so it had many different layers to me um well, yeah, certainly addressing you know the history as part of the projection mapping you know dustin used a lot of uh footage of what has happened in Richmond uh, on there. And we used a lot of imagery that we projected on the monument itself. So we very much want to try and tell the story of the space as well as you know, capture the spirit that has risen up around Marcus David Peters. Yeah, it kind of feel like if you couldn't go visit Richmond this summer, we wanted to somehow um, make something that we could put anywhere that still kind of captured that feeling of being there. Yeah, and I want to add that the composition <laughs> of the piece too. I mean, there's plenty of like, you know, you can just get on Facebook or look through any major um, newspaper um, to see images like taken on site and stuff like that. But that's not the same, it's, uh, or at least it doesn't communicate on the same level as actually composing those experiences into a cohesive piece. And uh, one of the things that I admire most about this project is it kind of blends, uh, not only does it blend uh, traditional media, um, like my oil painting with projection mapping and digital media, but the, the composition um, itself, uh, which, you know, is digitally collaged, but evocative of a lot of um, historical painting carries with it, I think, a, a kind of emotional import that represents what this means for the community in a way that a more documentarian approach could never capture. Um, so that's one of my favorite things about this piece is 
you know, we need to talk about what we've been experiencing and what Richmond has gone through on multiple levels. And I feel that this piece speaks to an emotional level um, that kind of, uh, it transcends the kind of superficiality of um, news footage and penetrates a little bit deeper. Thanks for that. Be beautifully said. Yeah, like, um, I think, you know, the day we got back to the circle and there were signs that were up, you know, declaring it Marcus David Peters Circle, um, you know, and just the community renaming the space and just renaming what it means and, um, you know, not with any kind of official permission or anything. Um, I think that was the, one of the most beautiful parts of that experience. And that's definitely, you know, trying to just capture that in any kind of sense it was um, a challenge. That was definitely the goal. And I feel like, you know, in some way people can get that feeling uh, by seeing it, hopefully. You know, one thing like to go up with Miguel said is, you know, we wanted to evoke kind of the language of the sacred, you know, um, we wanted to use uh, sacred imagery. I looked at uh, a lot of religious paintings in our local museum and some of the stuff I'd seen at the National Gallery of the Arts in the last year or so and had, you know, taken pictures for references and I kind of helped uh, design this or they, they helped to design this sort of imagery and language we use for this because we wanted to evoke the sacred nature of human life and of Marcus's life. That was a big goal for us and you know a lot of like you look at the frame of the painting as we call it and it's a lot of African sort of imagery and colors and tones and we went to we brought in a Christian imagery imagery and we wanted to also reference you know, sort of a Buddhist uh, Tibetan mm -hmm. style of art where they use a lot of frames and uh, spaces within spaces in their paintings representation of a spiritual realm. Yeah, I think that just like um, our community is a synthesis, uh, this work of art um, on every level of its conception is a synthesis. And uh, I, think that's, I think that's the way forward. Um, in the arts, just in general. I, I, I think, um, I don't know, I, I, I hope that people picked up on how we were bringing together things that you normally don't see together um, out of maybe force of cultural or historical habit, but in our own inner lives, you know, we live with, you know, these many different layers of meaning and, uh, and I, I just think it's sort of, um, you know, awesome that this piece sort of embodies that. It, it feels like, um, you know, it's, it's art that's not trying to be art, you know, it, it's art that's trying to convey life in um, as honest uh, terms as we can. Thanks for that, Miguel. One thing that really stands out for this piece as well in the submission is the collaboration. You brought this uh, piece uh, to the Black Lives Matter exhibition and, and you have projected work on site. You know, that's been sort of an ongoing project for you. Can you talk a little bit about that collaboration and maybe what brought you to the three of you together to work on this for this particular site or work together? And is it an ongoing collaboration? I mean, so much of our work this year, uh, so working out of Marcus David Peer Circle has just collaborative in nature. We were always working with uh, the community and you know, the mind was changing every day. And you know, as, as we started expanding the conversation and scope of the subject matter we're projecting, you know, we started to turn towards you know, wanting to celebrate black art and you know, Miguel, uh, Miguel has a great resource for that. Miguel has such a great historical knowledge that Dustin and I do not have. And uh, we just naturally sort of brought Miguel in as you know, someone to help us find content. And we use some of his uh, students' art from Virginia State University. We use them on the monument. So that sort of just became a natural collaboration. And, you know, Miguel and Dustin and I have been friends for a long time. And so, you know, we have so much respect for him as an artist and particularly as someone who does such a great, beautiful job of representing, you know, human beings and their bodies and their energies and emotion 
through his painting that it seemed like the natural choice if we were going to you know try and make an emotionally moving portrait that Miguel was the go-to person yeah thank you yeah it was um for me I, I don't consider myself to be a political artist um I'm much more interested in sort of the as far as my art goes, it doesn't mean that I'm not a politically concerned person, but when I go into my studio, um, I'm going towards, you know, my work speaks to much more sort of internal, uh, personal spaces. And um, I think it's interesting for me through this collaboration is kind of utilizing um, I guess the, the more personal nature of my work in a broader political context. And I hope, um, you know, the goal was to capture Marcus, um, not just as, you know, another, um, you know, another name in a long list of names of black men who have died to police violence, but to actually uh, try to get some essence of a real human being. Um, you know, I don't, you know, I used to tell people, I don't, I don't paint bodies, I paint people. And uh, I, you know, so it was, I'm not gonna lie, it was a lot of pressure, especially not having known um, Marcus personally. You know, all I had was, you know, stories uh, things I had read about him. Um, but, you know, I, I hope that some of that kind of humanity that comes from the interpersonal sphere between people has, you know, been carried to the public sphere, um, that it operates as some sort of, uh, I guess, gateway to empathy. And, um, it would be cool if more uh, politically minded art took this sort of humanistic approach. Um, you know, perhaps, you know, we might reach some people, you know? Thanks for that, Miguel. Well, I appreciate you, the three of you joining today and bringing your comments. I wanted to bring this up on screen for our viewers. Um, if they haven't seen all of this information, I encourage everybody to take a look here. There's a video as well. So please dive in further and enjoy the exhibition. So thank you again for joining us. Yeah, thanks thanks, thanks for having us, Francis. Thanks for having us. Certainly. <laughs>